Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. I'm Aurelia Voltaire, and this lovely lady is Mayumi Toyoda. Hello, my love. Which happens to be my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> the dad jokes, they've already begun. <laughs> I'm going to be the king of Halloween again this year. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm going to be a pumpkin king. But my pumpkin mask is so huge that if I wore it, I wouldn't fit on this in like on the same love seat with you. Yeah, it would be like that. So maybe I'll wear it after we're done shooting. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to our best Halloween home decor of 2023 episode. You might be wondering like why it's so late in the season and you might be wondering why there's only one because in previous years you know I used to do like every single store and each one would have its own episode yeah and they'd be much earlier in the season but this year has been very challenging at the Lair of Voltaire because there's been some very big developments I probably shouldn't tell them about them though right just a little bit just a little well I signed a book deal to create a gothic homemaking book and that's coming out uh, around Halloween 2024. Yay! Yeah, that's the good news. Yay. The bad news is I've spent the last three months of my life creating three years worth of gothic homemaking content. <laughs> so it's taken up a, a, a whole lot of my time. But the good news again is that next year that book will be out and because I'm filming everything, presumably, fingers crossed, they will also be make possibly, don't hold me to it, possibly the most gothic homemaking episodes of any season ever. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm getting myself in trouble? A little bit. Maybe I am. Uh, another reason for why there's so few uh, home decor episodes these th these days is because with every year that goes by, I try to be less the guy who reviews the Halloween home decor and more the guy who creates the Halloween home decor. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a fledgling spooky home decor line called the Lair of Voltaire. Some pretty cool items. Yes, I love them. Cemetery Smile lipstick just came out. Oh, yes, they're this super beautiful. All sorts of really, really and great stuff. The Craven. Stuff. And the Craven. My yeah, favorite. probably your favorite. Uh, but in any case, it's entirely possible that there will be an entire Halloween home decor line. Wonderful. We'll see. We'll see. Yes. We'll see. Nonetheless, the album. oh my god, in the album, right. So while I'm doing all of this stuff, I also happen to somehow write and record a Halloween album which came out a few days ago. So I hope that you're adding these songs to your Halloween playlist. And now without further ado, let us get into it. This is our best Halloween home decor of 2023. This is just the best of the best of the stuff that we found. Mm -hmm. And we went to all the stores. This is, these are the best ones, I think. Yes. And we're gonna start where it all begins because Halloween shopping season starts around June or July mm -hmm. at a little place called at home. Take a look. Take a look. <laughs> Having seen a ton of Code Orange posts, we took an Uber to Rego Park, Queens, to the location closest to us. And sadly, we found a lot of empty shelves, which was scary. And what you're seeing here was our third trip to at home. It did have a few nice things like this skeletal candelabra, which wasn't a total bust. It was a tiny little partial bust, and they had this incredible raven lantern sure to wow. But I was certainly left racking my skull wondering, where is everything? Every year I pick up pumpkins like these as I find them very helpful for DIY projects. I plop them into the cart, and so it began. Around the corner there was another sparsely stocked aisle where I met this guy. This could be a good replacement head for Orville, or am I getting ahead of myself? There were some Nightmare Before Christmas trinkets and some jack-o'-lanterns, but mostly there was this truly terrifying void staring back at us. Several aisles away, we found the autumn floral section and Mayumi jumped right into the reeds to delight in the selection. And an excellent collection it was with a variety of fabulous flora in myriad autumn colors. Somehow they always end up in Mayumi's hair. What do you plan to do with that? <laughs> For the witch hat. A witch hat? Yes. Witch hat. The witch hat. Wh witch hat. The black one. She doesn't always get my dumb jokes. I love the bad puns almost as much as I love this autumn floral. By now you probably know I get kind of wrapped up in it. 
And so, as usual, I selected the pieces I thought would best make for a spooky bouquet. Here's your bump and groove to the clavicle chord. Some might find it humorous. Stirring them up can be dangerous. We are on dead serious when we do the skeleton dance. I'm always amazed by how realistic some of these pieces are, and I just can't leave them behind. Dance. Which of you ghouls gonna take a chance? You! Do the skeleton dance. Jump into the middle there, undead Elvis. Snake that spine and shake that pelvis. Grab, grab, grab a bat. Dig your grave and tip your hat. Now throw your hands above your head. Be the king of pop when he raised the dead. Zombie to the left. We were ready to leave when I stumbled upon another Halloween section in an odd part of the store. So that's where they were hiding all of the spooky decorations. These pumpkins were cute, but to be frank, I prefer ones that are more spooky. This was a very popular one this year with the skellies with the little dangling arms. It's a really cute design for sure, but I much prefer this one that was made of metal! And while the design was a bit too farmhouse y for my taste, the little bat was really ringing my bell, and I appreciate the rustic approach to its construction. But it's the realistic pumpkins that squash the competition in my book. And I love the gnarly stems on these, so I just had to plop a few into the cart. One way out! One way out! One way out! Meanwhile, as usual, Mayumi found some things that light up. She said they'd make for excellent keychains. I swear this woman was a moth in a previous life. <laughs> and while surveying our hall, wait, who put these light up candles in here? Must have been Moth Yumi. <laughs> Truth be told, they're kind of cool and I think they may serve as inspiration for some that I want to make from scratch. They had many styles of artificial candles, but truth be told, I prefer the real ones. And no bones about it, they had several brilliant options. They also had this cognac and rum scented candle with a really great gothic design. Now that's a smell to die for. Of course, there were plenty of cute and kitschy Halloween knickknacks to sink your candy corn teeth into. And even Halloween hoedown was still hanging around this year. But I tend to look for things like this that I find very useful for DIY projects. And this year, they came in black, saving me the trouble of having to paint them. I think these might come in handy for a dinner party place card DIY project that I have in mind. So, in the cart they went. Every year they have these skull-shaped bottles, and it seems they add new colors every single year. But I have so many that I definitely don't need any more. Wait, they have them in gray now? Okay, I may need a couple of those. Maybe even three. And I just know I'm probably going to be doing something vampire related at some point, so I grabbed a blood red one as well. Every year they add more of these spooky bottle designs, and if you're a frequent watcher of the show, then you know what I always look for. That they are functional and the lids come off. I got excited when this one did, but then I realized that someone probably pried it off because all of the others were glued on. Now here's one where they did take the time to design a removable top, and it really makes all of the difference. The skull was a nice sculpt, and the iridescent glass was downright dreamy. In another floral section, I found these, and I thought, They're so dark. They're so dreary. They're so dead. They make the perfect bouquet. Hey, wait a minute. Ah, uh, thank you. I love them. Into the cart they went. And just as we thought we were done, we spotted the skeleton section. There were skeletons that were both smaller and larger than life, as well as just regular old human size. And some came in finishes realistic enough to be really quite handy. I dug up one for a closer look, and I have to say I was really rather surprised. It was quite hip for having such a realistic paint job. I sat him up and found he was much larger than a real skeleton. I wondered if he'd fit on Orville's now empty throne. And if he's quick with the wisecracks, a position just opened up at our home. Oh, 
I really wanted that skeleton. Oh, me too. It's it, amazing. Now it wouldn't fit in here. We have nowhere to put it. <laughs> but what if we put it like this? Well, like all hunched over? Yes. We, you know, remember when we went to Dusty's house? Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we recently went to go see our friend Dusty, the lead singer of Vision Video, uh, AKA Goth Dad. And yes. he, he lives Hello, in- Hello, Goth Dad. Yeah, hi, Goth Dad. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in uh, Athens, Georgia, mm. and he's outside of his house. He has this uh, just this enormous, skeleton it, it makes me so jealous we live in such a tiny place oh, we should we should just incredible. buy a real home sometime yes <laughs> let's do that speaking of being at home gosh you know all of those empty shelves drove me drove me kind of nuts I, you know because my time has been so limited this mm. year every time i saw a code orange on social media i'd be like mm. oh my god this stuff is already at home and i don't have time to go there and and we don't own a car speaking of, we, we don't have a house we don't have a car Oh well, here in, we're here. really we're really slumming it <laughs> so we don't have a car we don't live in the suburbs right so these stores aren't near us so we have to take like a $45 uber to go to at home so every time I would see one of those code oranges I'd say honey the Halloween stuff's at at home and we take like a $45 uber out to at home in Rego Park Queens and the shelves would just be empty and I would say where are these people going where where are these imaginary stores I, I say, I suggest that next year anybody writes hashtag code orange <laughs> that they be obligated to write the location of the store. Yeah, I agree. So you can just know where these things are. <laughs> so yeah, we were running around trying to find stuff at at home forever and ever and ever. And like what you saw was basically the most that we could find. Yeah. Now, because we don't have a car, right? We're either gonna Uber places or get there some other way. Now we do have a Home Goods, and Home Goods is the chain that typically puts out their Halloween stuff after at home. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking like mid-July. Now luckily for us, there's one on 96th Street, which is, you know, like 96 blocks away from us. But there are bicycles here. And yes. That one is a store that we can ride bikes to. Oh, it's beautiful. And that's quite a lot of fun. Yes. And we get some exercise while we're spending all of our money on Halloween trinkets. Yes. <laughs> so without further ado, here's the first home goods we went to. Take a look. Mayumi and I rented some city bikes and we ventured about four and a half miles to the closest home goods. Vamos. We finally arrived a bit sweaty, but ready to find some Halloween home decor. But let's just say there were so few good items, I couldn't exactly pick my poison, even here in the Big Apple. There were some Halloween home decor items, just not anything I'd want to get my hands on. Then I spotted this spiderweb placemat that I bought at a Marshalls in Hollywood a few years ago. Upon lifting it up, I realized it was actually a table runner. That might come in handy for a spider-themed gothic dinner party I'm planning, as might these spider napkins. I got really excited when I saw this metal candelabra, only to discover it was resin. It's still a really great design though. Then in this section I spotted this cake stand. Unfortunately, it wasn't going to be a cakewalk, as I don't use brass or gold in the lair. Then I spotted this silver hurricane candle holder. Now that's more like it. And lightning struck twice when I found a second one. And that was all we found at our local home goods on our first visit. Oh. Yeah, it was slim pickings. It was slim pickings. And that was after all of these code oranges I saw. I saw all of these po people posting all of these amazing things at home goods. And I thought, we have to get there. We have to grab the bikes. We have to go to home goods. <laughs> yes. And we got there. There was just like nothing there. Very, very little thing. Mm -hmm. little, yeah, very few things. Um, but one of the tricks to finding the great Halloween home decor is to continue going to the same location again and again mm -hmm. because they get new stuff in every single day. Yes, that's true. Right, so it was only a couple of days later before we rented those bikes mm -hmm. and went back to the same home goods location. Take a look. We returned to that home goods location with all of our fingers and tentacles crossed. 
Things didn't look good at first, but after some digging, we found these creepy crawlies. There was this lovely spider motif serving bowl, and I love that it's made of sustainable materials. It featured a really nice metal spider base that looked kind of like a face hugger, and the top was frosted glass. There was also a skull version, and getting that was a no-brainer. <laughs> I mean that literally. This skull has no brain. And I would imagine that there are some of you out there who would love to get your talons on a serving bowl like this one. But hiding behind some other objects was the one that got me really excited. This large hurricane candle holder had a skull and crossbones base that I just had to have. Honestly, I may never use this for candles. I can use this to put a platter on or to use as its own dish, but I can feel in my bones that this is gonna be an all time favorite. So there were a few good finds. A few good finds our second time at Home Goods. Yeah. But you gotta understand that the way this works is that these big chains, they send different merchandise to different stores. So another trick of gothic homemaking and seeking the best Halloween home decor is to go to as many locations of that store as you can. Now as it happens, the next Home Goods near us is in Edgewater, New Jersey, a different state. It's across the Hudson River. <laughs> and I thought to myself, are we seriously going to take an Uber all of the way to Edgewater, New Jersey? And that's when I discovered there's a boat that goes there from Manhattan. I never thought I'd be in a boat. You never thought you'd be on a boat? Yes. On a big blue watery road? Exactly. Well, luckily for you, the water in the Hudson is not blue. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun getting there. Oh yes, I loved it. Take a look. At the 68th Street Pier, we hopped on this ferry and shipped off for New Jersey. On the way, we got incredible views of Manhattan, and honestly, it makes for some really great sightseeing. And if the weather is nice, you can let down your hair and really enjoy that salty breeze. Most people who use this ferry do so to commute back and forth between New York and New Jersey. And let me tell you that this is the best, most romantic way to get to New Jersey. That is, unless you can get a fleet of helicopters to take you there. In moments, we were happy to be in Edgewater, New Jersey, because unlike our location, this place was jam-packed with Halloween goodies. There were all manner of pumpkin-headed people and gourd-headed guys and girls, letting us know we had landed smack dab in the middle of Halloween. And I immediately spotted this item. This skeletal party ice bucket was made of solid metal and it was huge. I really love the sculpting on it and I really appreciate that the rib cage is hollow. That's a great detail. And I knew for a fact that I'd be taking this thing back to the lair because, oh my God, I love it. That item is so amazing. Oh yes. Oh, I love that thing. <laughs> But ultimately we realized it was just going to be no fun whatsoever to try to get that back to Manhattan on the ferry. Mm -mm. So what I did was while I was still standing in the store, I looked on the Home Goods website and they did have it available. So I bought it on the spot, had it delivered to the Lair of Voltaire, and then we got back to shopping. Of course, Moth Yumi was busy finding items that are shiny and light up, like this witchy crystal ball. We already have a couple crystal balls similar to this one, but then Mayumi found one that was the color scheme of the lair, and it plays a rockin' spooky tune. So that was a must have. I'm still working on my gothic kitchen remodel, and I think this spiderweb basket is gonna be perfect to hold fruits and vegetables. I think it will look great hanging from the ceiling. So that's going to come hang with us. Unlike that brass and glass one at the New York City location, this all black cake stand is going to fit right in an R web. There were truly a lot of great items at this location. And then, with a little surgical extraction, I was able to grab this metal spider dish. This might be good for condiments. I purchased a silver version of this metal dish at Joann's a couple of years ago, but I couldn't help buying this one in black. Then I spotted another one of these spider baskets and I figured I should get it while I can. Mayumi pointed out this skull-shaped bottle opener that will go great in our gothic kitchen or be an excellent addition to our growing gothic bar. In the cushion section, there were some spooky ones and ones that looked like Weezer had gone goth 
and some you might be into. And they had table runners with bats, and they had table runners with bats and spider webs, and ones with spider webs and bats. We ultimately chose this runner for our someday gothic dining room. Now, if only we had a table. In a corner, I spotted this ornate bottle with a wonderful bat motif, but unfortunately, it was merely decorative, leaving me wondering, where's the rum gone? There was also this amazing hurricane candle holder with a beautiful bat motif in metal. I stupidly didn't buy it on the spot, but later came to my senses and picked it up at another location. Other things I didn't buy but are nonetheless amazing include this spectacular metal bat bowl. This is just an incredible item, but brown wouldn't work in the lair. Would this fit in at your lair? And then there was this glorious King Cobra serving tray. Wood doesn't really work with my color scheme, but can we just talk about how exquisite the sculpting is on this? It's on a whole other scale. Just wow. I also don't buy dolls or figurines, but if I did, this green witch would be the first in line. She was huge and so aesthetically just magical. I also really liked this candelabra, but I'm presently holding out for metal ones. I loved how realistic this spider prop was, and the sculpting on this Katrina was amazing, and much better than most. But to be honest, we get better ones in Mexico that are actually handmade in clay, so we'll hold out for one of those. And while I already have too many cauldrons, I don't have any that are a candle with a little skeleton inside, so... Into the stew you go, my pretty! And that's when Mayumi made a shocking discovery. Just behind the aisle were an army of metal skeletons and top hats. These dapper dudes were enormous and made of metal, and they were holding ice buckets. And they were every bit as big as the price tag on them. I love it! Price tag aside, how could you not? I took one down to see how tall it was, and honestly, I was ready to pay 300 bones for this thing. But there was no way I was taking it back on the ferry, so I figured I'd buy it online when I got home. Don't go, Bone Daddy! Then it was back to the boat for a romantic sunset cruise back home. We were gently deposited on the shores of Manhattan, where we waved goodbye to our own personal love boat. That was an amazing boat ride. <laughs> yes. It was so much fun. Well, we got home, and I looked for those big metal skeleton bucket holders on the Home Goods website, but sadly, they did not offer them for delivery. So I was not able to get one. But it's probably for the best, because I mean, where would we put it? There's no room for one in here. <laughs> <laughs> they were too big. I mean, I guess we could put one where Orville used to sit. Ah, poor Orville. May he rest in pieces. Now this is a crazy idea, and most people are going to think I'm nuts. But if you can travel to different states and visit different locations of that same chain, you might just get lucky because they do things regionally. Sometimes a store like Home Goods will send things to California that they're never gonna send to Texas and vice versa. So visiting other states when possible can really, really yield some fantastic results. Now, a lot of people are gonna think I'm nuts even suggesting that, but I'm a touring musician. I fly every weekend of the year and I do that all of the time. I visit these stores in many, many different states. And let me tell you, we found some very interesting things when I was playing a show in Phoenix, Phoenix Arizona. Yay. Take a look. The day after my show in Phoenix, we visited a home goods there and they had completely different offerings. They had a large selection of these storage boxes that look like books, but since I'm presently designing and manufacturing a line of my own, I'm not really in the market for these, but I was certainly impressed by how many styles they had. They also had these fantastic figures I hadn't seen at any other location. And leave it to Mayumi to find the one item that lit up. <laughs> what a wonderfully whimsical design. <laughs> I love it. Personally, I loved these guys. They were made of metal and the sculpting was superb and they'd fit perfectly at the lair. 
Whether or not I should get them would not require my brain to do any heavy lifting. In fact, I'd go so far as to say I was pumped. Did I embarrass you? No. <laughs> You've done worse. What? <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> my next stop was a Home Goods in Bloomington, Indiana. I entered the store in Bloomington, Indiana to find several end caps full of Halloween items. And once again, this location was full of items I saw at no other Home Goods location. Now this is exactly the kind of item I'm always on the lookout for. This candelabra is metal and it looks like you might actually find it sitting on a table at Dracula's castle. This is in my opinion perfect for year-round use in a gothic lair. And to make things even better, I found another one so I have a matching set. I also grabbed the skeleton hand, it's metal and the sculpt is pretty good. I have no idea what I'm going to use it for, but I'm sure it will come in, yes, handy. <laughs> Next, I found hiding on a bottom shelf, this lovely haunted house prop. This is honestly one of the best I've ever seen. It's got a fantastic little bat, and being black with purple accents, it will fit right in at the lair. You already know I don't buy dolls, but I did want to give this little adorable elf witch a shout out. We have matching ears. Then I spotted this item. In the words of old Greg, it's got everything that's good. It has bats and skeleton hands. Unfortunately, it was just a little bit too plasticky for me. If this had been made of metal, I would have definitely bought it. And finally, hiding in the shadows, I found something I thought I'd never see. Hipster Frankenstein. And as handsome as he was, there are some things I'm just not ready for. The next day I had a show in Indianapolis and I stopped in at a home goods there. These beautiful gothic witches let me know that I was in the right place. In fact, it seemed like the whole coven was in attendance, which was very reassuring. And I was in there for more than a spell, as this place was packed with Halloween items. Once again, there were lots of those faux book storage boxes, and I found the best one I've ever seen. I loved the purple color and the bat illustration, and again, if I wasn't making my own treasure toms, I would have bought it. I've searched all season for spooky glassware, and this was the first place I found some. While I don't make a lot of martinis, I had to get my talons on these. I also picked up this skeletal cocktail shaker, which is remarkably similar to one I got at Pottery Barn a couple of years ago. They had a tiki-shaped decanter, which I thought was a novel idea. And they had my old friend in the tub. They also had this cute pumpkin serving tray in silver and this marble cheese board, which was one of my favorite items from last year. I can rest in peace knowing I already have one and don't have to bring this heavy slab on the plane with me. I found some of these skeletal napkin rings, which I apparently can't stop buying for some reason. And this is an item I saw in a million code orange posts that I spent all season looking for. And when I finally had one in my hands, I decided I didn't love the sculpting. So there it stayed. I was bored thinking I was done when I suddenly found another display. Dump into the middle there, undead Elvis, do the skeleton ballet. I wasn't sure what these metal spiders were for at first, but apparently you can arrange them on a wall for a very elegant yet spooky look. They also had these beetles that didn't bug me one bit. So I bought both sets. And lastly, I found these skull-shaped string lights that I was a bit skeptical of until I pressed the button and they were illuminated. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to need these. Um, and these. Um, and these. I have to walk them all the way to the cashier, but luckily, they're light. And that concludes all of the best things that we found at Home Goods this year. And I have to say, Home Goods was killing it. Oh, wow. They were really winning Halloween. I mean, they just had so many amazing things this year. Yes. Now, usually around the time Home Goods is done putting out all of their Halloween stuff, you get another wave from stores like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. And luckily, there's a couple of those right in town, so we didn't have to go on a boat and we didn't have to go on a plane and we <laughs> didn't even have to go on bikes. We actually could walk to Yes. Those. And here's what we found at Marshalls and TJ Maxx. By the time I made it to one of our local Marshalls stores, everything had been sort of picked over. Maybe 
by this vulture, which truth be told is probably one of my favorite of the animal skeletons that you see every year. Next I saw these skeletal children on a slide and while we love skeletons and while we love items made of metal, we don't have any room for this, so we didn't get it. If you watch the show regularly, you know I don't decorate with movie memorabilia. I did want to point out these Nightmare Before Christmas plates because they're really quite nice. Of course, I much prefer things like this that look like you might find them in an actual haunted mansion as opposed to in the home of a fan of the haunted mansion. And they also had this lovely matching platter. In the kitchen towel section, I found a towel that had me saying, hell yeah. And on the flip side, it had a lot of heart. Next, we went to TJ Maxx where they had various end caps arranged by color. They had one that was orange, black, and white, serving some traditional Halloween vibes, sure to make you feel at home. There was a shelf of black and silver items, and one of black and gold items, and one of black, silver, and gold items. Honestly, whoever organized these shelves deserves a raise. Speaking of raised, I love the lids on these majestic candles that seemed made for dark side royalty. There was a black and white shelf, which was probably my favorite. And while I always swore that I'd never buy a yoga skeleton, I felt strangely attracted to this one, proving you should never, never say never. There was a shelf with classic Gothic motifs that made me so happy I wanted to dance the night away and be whisked away to the nearest raven. <laughs> Terrible. There was a shelf that was orange and purple and one that was purple and green. And not to toot my own horn, but as those are the colors of my King of Villains tour, they had my full attention. Mayumi saw a future with this green crystal ball. And I thought that this skeleton was very, very handsome. I mean, look at those cheekbones. And speaking of skeletons, I finally found these skeletal wine glasses I get every year because I love the little guy. I buy more every year to replace the ones I've broken over the course of the year. And as we were leaving, I found these gorgeous silver candles that I think will come in great for a gothic candlelit dinner. Now, for the reasons that I mentioned earlier in the episode, we did not make it to a lot of TJ Maxx or Marshall's locations this year. But we found a few cool things at our local store. Absolutely. And I know how much you love that, that green orb. I love it. It is really beautiful. Uh, well, there were stores that we missed this year, that were stores that we did not make it to. But I've got to tell you, there's one store that we absolutely had to go to because this store, and it's always a surprise, but this store has won the Halloween home decor game here on Gothic Homemaking several years in a row. And that's... Pottery Barn! That's right, Pottery Barn. Take a look. Every year we go to Pottery Barn and enter a jungle of beiges and neutral colors. We brave the sea of sofas and throw pillows, and when we saw a sign that read trick or treat, we knew they hadn't ghosted us this year. In fact, there were plenty of ghosts. Mayumi loves these ghost bowls and she uses them in our home in Mexico City to serve soup on a regular basis. So we picked up this matching tray for her to spirit back to Mexico. And while it might not be for me, I'd bet the Batman would be robbing this tray if he saw it. This bowl is more my style for hosting a gathering of ghouls. And since I love coffins and skeletons, I had to love this tray. Though he did have me wondering, why the long face? Cheer up, it's Halloween! This was my favorite item from last year, it was great to see it again. And since I can't resist skeletal cutlery, I bought more of these salad tossers. And yes, believe it or not, I got more of these so I can someday say, who knew we had 8,000 napkin rings? And then there's the phantasmagorical skeletal glassware. I bought a couple more of these skeletal champagne flutes again to replace the ones I break during the year. And this year I decided to add these glasses to the collection. And at long last, I finally bought a nice skeletal decanter for our little gothic bar setup that I'm working on. Again, I don't often make martinis, but it's always a good time to grow and expand your recipes, so I picked up a couple of these. 
we really made a dent in the glassware collection when I noticed these tall glasses. I didn't really think I needed these for anything, but Mayumi, who doesn't drink alcohol, suggested that they'd be great for drinking water. And well, a ghoul's gotta stay hydrated, so we picked up a couple of those as well. And that's when Mayumi spotted this tablecloth. The staff was kind enough to let us open it up and inspect it on a nearby table. It has a fantastic skull and some really great hanging fruit bats. And here's another one flying up here, as well as these unburied skeletons. And speaking of buried, behind this thin fellow and hidden under some gingham napkins, I spotted this creepy crawly serving bowl. It had some real weight to it. I love that it's black and that it's all metal. It has some nicely sculpted spidery bits. And my favorite part was that it looked really rustic, like it was banged into shape. Almost like a cauldron you'd use to cook up some unsuspecting soul. And there you have it. Those were our very best Halloween home decor items that we found this year. This year, I'm not gonna give it to Pottery Barn. I love Pottery Barn, I love their things, but this year, I'm gonna give the prize to Home Goods. Yes. I think Home Goods had incredible merchandise this year yes. and, and a wide selection of merchandise. A lot of it made in India, a lot of it in metal, glass, wood, marble, sustainable natural materials and I love that yeah so home goods wins Beautiful. this year uh, of course not counting Joanne if you would like to see the things we found at Joanne craft stores check out our episode to host a ghost so we're just not gonna count them because they got their own <laughs> episode this year and now like we've done every single year we're going to reveal our favorites Yay! You think it's gonna be a surprise? I don't think it's gonna be a big surprise to them to this year. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, what was your favorite item this year? Are you ready? I'm ready. Da 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 da! Ah, of course, of course, that green orb. I guess green crystal ball. And? And? Why is there always more than one with you? Because that's life! Uh, da da! Uh, I'm just glad you don't feel that way about fiancés. No, no. Yeah, okay, Elvira, we Don't get the picture. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 uh, they're beautiful. What you folks don't know is that she buys these things and she lights them all up every single night at the Lara Voltaire. So it always looks like just some crazy forest in here with lots and lots and lights of light up objects. I love it. I know you love those and I'm really glad that you have them. Thank you, my love. And now without further ado, my favorite object yes. and it's probably gonna be no surprise to anyone, but it's this guy. Bathtub. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with this or where I'm going to put it. Whoa. But I just know that I love it. I think so cool. It is so fantastic. If you guys have suggestions for what to use this for, what to put inside, or what's a good Halloween, uh, you know, sort of treat idea that, that you could use with this thing, by all means, let me know because I'm sort of stumped. Are you going to put your lamps in there? <laughs> That's an idea. Maybe. Now, we apologize for the lack of episodes this year. You know why we've been so busy. And hopefully, if everything turns out the way it's supposed to, that means that next year, Gothic Homemaking is going to be bigger and badder than ever. So stick around, have a safe and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.